Have you ever wondered why some people are more muscular than others? Why some people are more motivated, ambitious, and confident than others? Why do some people respond well to testosterone and some hardly respond at all? The answer is complicated as thousands of genes determine our unique physical stature and personalities. But I will go over one genetic factor that is widely overlooked. Everyone has a DNA code, also called genes, that creates a phenotype or a physical manifestation of our DNA blueprint. Everyone's DNA is different. If everyone's DNA was exactly the same, then we would all look exactly the same. The androgen receptor is no different. The DNA code for the androgen receptor varies for everyone. Variation in the andro in androgen receptors causes variation in androgen sensitivity. Some people have low androgen sensitivity, some people have normal androgen sensitivity, and some people have high androgen sensitivity. Testosterone in the blood means nothing until it binds to the androgen receptor. The medical community and current paradigm solely focus on the amount of testosterone in your blood to di diagnose hypogonadism and determine if you qualify for low testosterone treatment. But the testosterone in blood is only one potentially small factor of the equation. We're ignoring the other side of the equation where testosterone has to effectively bind to the androgen receptor and produce its cascade of effects. Now let's discuss the androgen receptor. First, let me explain how the androgen receptor works. An androgen, such as testosterone or DHT, binds to the androgen receptor. Next, the androgen receptor recruits co-activator proteins, which help the testosterone-bound androgen receptor translocate from the cell cytoplasm to the nucleus where it undergoes a conformational change to bind to an androgen responsive gene on the DNA. DNA then transcribes into mRNA. The mRNA translocates to the ribosomes, where it translates into a peptide or protein. What protein is translated from mRNA depends, depends on the cell function. If this occurs in a muscle cell, the mRNA translates into growth factors that aid in hypertrophy of the muscle cell, resulting in an increased muscle mass and strength. If this occurs in a brain cell, the mRNA may translate into a peptide that aids in the production of dopamine or dopamine receptors. In this process of an androgen binding to the androgen receptor and producing its cascade of effects, there are multiple ways in which variability in the DNA code or the translation of mRNA into a protein causes differences in the way each individual responds to testosterone, many negative, some positive, that affects androgen sensitivity. Some people respond well to testosterone and some people are less sensitive to testosterone. Here are four potential mechanisms that cause variability in androgen sensitivity. One, DNA consists of four nucleotides, A for adenine, C for cytosine, G for guanine, and T for thymine. These nucleotides are arranged in units of three nucleotides in different sequences called codons. These codons are arranged in different sequences and linked together to form, to form very long DNA codes. At the end of the code for an androgen receptor are CAG repeats, where cytosine, adenine, and guanine codon repeat many times. The length or number of times the CAG sequence is repeated determines frequency or amount of androgen receptors throughout the body. The average CA CAG sequence repeats 8 to 35 times. It is different for everybody. The number of repeats is inversely proportional to the number of androgen receptors. Fewer CAG repeats mean a higher frequency of androg androgen receptors and vice versa. The more androgen receptors, the more sensitive you are to androgens such as testosterone and DHT. Outliers may have fewer or more CAG repeats than the average of 8 to 35. Two, androgen receptors are a long sequence of amino acids bonded together that fold into a conformation or shape that has perfectly aligned binding points to bind to an androgen such as testosterone or DHT. It's pretty cool how it works. You have this long chain of amino acids and the amino acids have positive and negative charges where a positive charge on this end will, will perfectly align with a negative charge in this end. Like they're the chain of amino acids is in a certain sequence, a specific sequence to allow this positive charge to bond to a negative charge over here and a negative charge over here to bond to a positive charge over here so that it folds into this conformation or shape. Again, that perfectly aligns with the, the 
positive negative charges on a testosterone molecule or any androgen, hexandrolone, non androgen, whatever. Mutations in the sequence can decrease the number of binding points in the binding pocket on the androgen receptor. In some case, cases, a mutation can increase the binding, binding points. An androgen receptor with fewer binding points would have a lower binding affinity to testosterone, and hence there would be a lower androgen sensitivity causing a low response to testosterone. Just over 900 amino acids make up an androgen receptor. The theory was that there is a normal amino acid sequence template called a wild type. But there are currently over 1,500 known mutations to this wild type sequence. The amount of known mutations increases every year. Contemporary knowledge is now illuminating us that there is no wild type or normal sequence of androgen receptors. Just like the rest of our DNA, everyone's androgen receptors have a slightly different sequence that causes variability. However, there are certain domains within the sequence of the androgen receptor where a specific sequence is necessary to form the structure that can effectively bind an androgen. If a mutation occurs in one of these important domains, then there is a major genetic defect called androgen insensitivity syndrome. It is analogous to building a house. There are certain load-bearing walls that are integral to the structure of the house. Other walls can be deleted and inserted, which slightly change the function of the house. But as long as the load-bearing walls are there, the house structure remains intact. Mutations outside of these important domains do not cause major defects, but can cause a disparity in the function of the androgen receptor, from low androgen sensitivity to high androgen sensitivity. Mutations throughout the androgen receptor can cause a wide range of effects, from complete androgen sensitivity. This is where an XY chromosome male with complete androgen sensitivity will develop breasts, a working vagina, and ovaries. A popular example of this is actress Sigourney Weaver, who is an XY female. So she was born with XY chromosomes to be a male, but because testosterone and DHT could not bind to the androgen receptors, she developed breasts, a vagina, and a working ovaries. So you can go anywhere from this complete androgen insensitivity uh, to normal androgen sensitivity in every step in between. As I mentioned earlier, there are even some mutations that can cause an increase in androgen sensitivity. Have you ever seen somebody who responds really well to testosterone? They gain an incredible amount of muscle masses and an incredible improved quality of life. Well, this could be one of the reasons why they have increased androgen sensitivity. On a side note, because this is very interesting, prostate cancer can be characterized by a mutation in the androgen receptor that causes an increased binding affinity of DHT to the androgen receptor in the prostate, or a mutation that causes efficient stabilization of the androgen receptor once bound by DHT. Both of these scenarios increase the androgen sensitivity of the androgen receptor in the prostate. Because of this, androgen deprivation therapy, or chemical castration, does not halt the activation of androgen receptors in the prostate. One of the treatments for prostate cancer is androgen deprivation. Now, evidence indicates that these mutations in the androgen receptor to improve androgen sensitivity in the prostate increase with itch androgen deprivation. This is an evolutionary mechanism to adapt to a low androgen environment. There is also evidence that increased testosterone suppresses these mutations that invariably cause these forms of prostate cancer. In other words, low androgens cause these mutations that can lead to prostate cancer. Therefore, there is evidence that the current medical paradigm of not treating low testosterone and letting patients stew in a low androgen environment may increase the risk of curating prostate cancer. Three. As I stated before, when testosterone binds to the androgen receptor, coactivator proteins translocate the testosterone-bound androgen receptor to the nucleus to bind to the DNA. There are mutations in the androgen receptor that can cause the testosterone molecule to dissociate from the androgen receptor too quickly. This can cause problems with the potency of the cascade effect and hence cause varying levels of testosterone's effectiveness. There is an androgen insensitivity syndrome mutation where testosterone binds to the androgen receptor, but testosterone dissociates before the androgen receptor can bind to the DNA, causing complete androgen insensitivity. Four, 
When the testosterone bound androgen receptor recruits coactivators to translocate and stabilize the testosterone bound androgen receptor to bind to the DNA, a mutation can occur in the androgen receptor that can cause a low or high recruitment affinity for the coactivators. Low recruitment affinity destabilizes testosterone's bond to the androgen receptor and can cause the testosterone bound androgen receptor to bond incorrectly to the DNA, effectively making testosterone less potent or completely impotent. High recruitment, in, in, uh, high recruitment affinity can increase androgen receptor function, making testosterone more effective. Here's the conclusion. The medical community, nor anyone else, is considering the other half of the equation regarding the binding affinity of testosterone to the androgen receptor and the potency or effectiveness of testosterone's cascade. Low androgen sensitivity is pervasive, and the empirical data suggests that many people have low sensitivity response to testosterone. What does this mean? This means that some people need a higher doses of testosterone to have the same effect as the average person. This means that some people with 500 to 600 nanograms per deciliter testosterone levels with symptoms of hypogonadism have low androgen sensitivity and need higher circulating levels of testosterone to be as effective as the average person. This means that some people need circulating testosterone levels of 1500 to 1800 nanograms per deciliter to feel normal. As a community, it's important that we take into account the fact that there's a massive disparity between the way each individual reacts to different compounds, different dosages, and different hormone blood levels. In the next video, I will expound on other factors preventing testosterone from binding to the androgen receptor, such as environmental toxins and glucuronidation.